piece or do you believe that you'll be going back to fighting very soon? One single bullet can reignite the old animosity in fighting which might start at any time. So behind me, just the remnants of what's happened here, a missile strike, an Israeli missile strike. That was my house. Where is your family? Where is your family? here. government, we need a law and order, and we need to settle all these problems, because every time you are looking, some people are dying without any reason. Almost every family, there is at least a person abducted. If it is not abducted, there is a person who has been killed in the family. survivors, otherwise they'd be going a little bit more delicately at this. Where we are right now is uh, a minefield which we're currently clearing. In those days, everything was about war. These are all things coming out of the closet. RPG launcher. Obviously, the insurgents really don't like it. We take away their toys. Is she afraid sometimes? Uh, can you come in the next year? No, I'm not afraid. There's very bad situation there. There's very bad humanity situation there. We are prepared to follow any order we are given by our leadership. It's not hard for me because I think this is a just war. On this, the third day of the offensive, the Marines are using what could be considered a scorched earth policy in insurgent-held areas. I've been covering war for the last five years as a network producer and correspondent. I worked in Kosovo, Afghanistan, and I spent a lot of time in Iraq. I learned lessons from those places, but one of the most profound was how limiting television network news could be in telling a complete and nuanced story. Having an independent blog, I also quickly learned that the internet could fill in some of those gaps. In November of 2004, I was a freelance reporter for NBC News covering a large joint effort to push insurgents out of Fallujah in western Iraq. This morning, the Marines seem to come into the city on a It's been a different story here at Joland Park. I was embedded with a Marine unit, and during the course of that battle, I videotaped a U.S. Marine hey, shooting a wounded, unarmed insurgent in a mosque. He's fucking faking he's dead. Yeah, he's breathing. He's faking he's fucking dead. That video clip became a flashpoint in the already heated debate over the war in Iraq. When NBC's report aired, I was called a traitor and got hundreds of hate emails and death threats that continued for a full year. At first it seemed strange to me, especially since we tried to handle the incident with sensitivity. On the report, NBC even paused the image prior to the actual shooting, a decision which at the time I not only supported but I pushed for. In hindsight, it was the wrong decision and probably the reason many Americans couldn't grasp what had happened there. We didn't trust Americans with the truth. We didn't allow them to see the full tape and make up their mind about whether that Marine shot that person with bad intentions or was in fear for his life or there was some other you know, middle ground there. As a freelancer, I also kept a war blog. Just a few days after my report on NBC aired, I posted a 2,500-word open letter in which I explained in great detail what had happened in that mosque. It was directed to the Marines that I was embedded with, but it was meant for the world. In it I wrote, so here ultimately is how it all plays out. When the Iraqi man in the mosque posed a threat, he was your enemy. When he was subdued, he was your responsibility. When he was killed in front of my eyes and my camera, the story of his death became my responsibility. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, it clarified the story because almost everyone in the world, all the media all over the world, picked up on that story. And they told the complete story, you know, based on what I had written in that independent blog. And in doing so, I think we set the record straight. So when I finally got back to America 
and a family friend named Joel Baer thought up the concept of the hot zone. With me working as a multimedia correspondent on the internet, it was an idea I couldn't easily dismiss. And so I developed the idea a little bit further and said, well, why don't we go back to all the world's war zones? Of course, Iraq, of, of course, Afghanistan, but also the conflicts that people weren't covering. Nepal and Sri Lanka, the Congo, Uganda, all of these places that were getting forgotten. I would travel solo for a complete year using a multimedia approach, sending back text dispatches, video and still photography. And this would provide a very clear picture of what was going on in these places.